Hi, I'm Miriam Joy and welcome to my studio. A lot of you have been asking for color videos on how to do color and to me it was just kind of a simple process and I forget that we need to go back to the basics sometimes and show that from the beginning. So I want to do a little bit of that for you today. I'm going to show you how I apply leather dye and then I'm also going to blend it down with kind of a technique that I do. And the first thing I do when I am working with um, gourds that I'm going to leather dye, you don't have to do this if you're using ink or um, any of the alcohol ink. So, but the first thing I do is I take my gourd and I dampen it. This gives you a more even um, application of the leather dye. And you can t simply do this as well by absorbing your paper towel and just applying it on. You just want it to absorb nice and even. You don't want to apply a lot of water. In fact, what I usually do is once I'm done and it's all wet, I make sure I've got it everywhere and then I wipe the remainder of that off. Now you want to be ready to go with your leather dye after that. And I like to use little cotton rounds that you use to remove makeup or anything like that. And there's bigger ones and these aren't as big so they absorb just the right amount. Always shake your leather dye and always work on a tray. I'll tell you the story about that in just a minute. I simply pour that onto the middle. I always start at the bottom of my gourd and work my way out, always kind of going around and around. Um, you want to always start at the bottom as well in case you have a problem with it or it's not quite the color you think it should be. I've even done that with colors that are the same color I've used before and they're now a totally different kind of color. So we just want to do this kind of quick. We're kind of doing this in a quick process because the faster you kind of get it on there, the less lines you're going to have as well. So we kind of have this nice even coat. And usually you start at the bottom a little bit darker and then you can add more when you're going to the top and on your pad, your leather dye, and then just work that right back in again. So we've got that all nice and dyed. Let's do just a little bit more at the top. I had a friend, a real good friend, who was actually using black leather dye in her kitchen and did not have it on a tray and spilled the whole thing. It went flying across the kitchen. She had to redo her kitchen. So always have a tray underneath you. That's just a real good piece of device, something. So if it spills, it's contained. And I've done it before. So that's always just a good piece of advice to keep in mind. Okay. So I just kind of get that on there. And I'm just going to take my paper towel and blend it in. Now when I'm working with real bright colors like this, as most of you are aware of, leather dye has a tendency to fade a little bit uh, faster than any of the other inks out there. A lot of people don't like to work with it for that fact. But what I will do a lot of times is take my leather dye as a base and then come back in with my inks and go over the top of it. Uh, the reason I use my leather dye as the base is because it is a brighter, more concentrated color than spinning layer upon layer of the ink dyes to get that effect. So a lot of times I use that as my base first. And you can see how this is really coming to life now with this red. It just really helped pop it. Here's the part where I haven't done and that's the part that I have done. So it just really even makes this redder. So 
I'm just going to bring this around a little bit more. I'm not going to worry about going it on the top too much because we're actually going to walk color down. Another thing that I really wanted to show you is when I travel, and I hate to travel with open leather dyes. I ink dyes aren't as bad that leather dyes have a tendency to leak out of the bottle. Put it into a glass jar first so if it spills out it's contained in that area and you don't have to worry about getting over everything because that's really not fun when I do that. So I am going to now take burgundy and we're going to walk this color down and what I do, I should have shook that first. I'm going to shake this first. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in the middle and I'm going to fold my color over, my pad over, excuse me. So I'm working with that colored area and what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk this down my gourd and you'll start to get a deeper color here. And normally, I think this would show up really well. You want to kind of think about doing it in three parts. I want to do it like in one, two, and three. And when you get down to the end, you want to kind of even just feather it off some more. So it's really light and feathery. And so you're maybe kind of picking that up so that you get that layered effect. And I may switch to a little bit darker color. We'll see in a minute here, just to have that show up a little bit more for you. This is one of the techniques that I use quite a bit that people are always asking me how I do. And this looks really good if you're gonna put just a wax design with a circle or, or something like that. That's starting to get a little bit more detail there. So then once we got that first line on, we want to come back and we want to still stop at that, start at the top and we're going to work that next layer in. And we're just bringing that down. We're stopping a couple inches and you would do this just depending on how long your gourd is and how far you want to bring this pattern down. And I'll come back in a minute here and feather my ends out. But remember, each time we go over this, we're darkening this, and I'm doing them right next to each other. I'm not leaving any space in between these. A lot of people leave space, and I don't want to leave any space between it. You can see the first and second layer now. So I'm just going to come in here, and I'm going to brush these tails just a little bit more slanted here. But you can see that a little bit just more feathery looking I guess instead of just a straight stop so now we've got the first and second layer and I hope you're able to see that real well and we're gonna do one more layer we're gonna bring it we're just gonna kind of stop it right after we get off of the rim there and if you wanted this to be darker, you could do each one of these a different color. I actually did that in my peacock, and I actually used acrylic paint to walk up with it instead. And um, that I had like a blue and a red. So we could even put one of these a basic black in the middle and come back over the red for the bottom layer and the top layer. You don't have to just get stuck with one color. But this gives it a real unique kind of feathery look I guess is is what we're after here so I'm just coming in I'm just feathering those edges a little bit again so, and you could if you had a taller gourd you could do this so it was either a third of the gourd or three-fourths of the gourd you really probably wouldn't want to divide it right in the middle more even you'd always want to either top or kind of bottom but see how you're going from the real light color here to the darker colors on up so it makes it a real fun process to do on your artwork 
So if you um, enjoy that, let me know. If you have any more questions about color, please email me at art at miriamjoy.com. I plan on be doing more of these color classes for you on different techniques as they come along. And please visit me at my website at miriamjoy.com. There is my product page and also there's a Facebook link that takes you over to um, Miriam Joy Gourd Creations where I post something new every day there for you to be inspired by. Also check out the rest of my videos. We're always trying to do something fun and new for you and I hope you enjoyed this and God bless.